Now that we have seen how basic mechanical measuring tools are used, let's examine more sophisticated measuring equipment, electronic and optical instruments. We use these advanced instruments to measure or check critical dimensions on precision parts or assemblies when other techniques are impractical or not precise enough. Let's start with two of the most common electronic instruments, the digital micrometer and digital calipers. They're quite similar to the standard mechanical instruments we've already seen. This digital micrometer is accurate to 50 millionths of an inch. Notice that it has the same basic design as the standard outside micrometer, including a barrel scale and a thimble scale. But the digital display on this version allows easier and quicker readings of greater precision. The digital keys offer additional features as well. It has preset capability, meaning that any desired measurement can be set on the display and recalled. The digital micrometer can convert between inches and millimeters at the push of a key. It also has a measurement hold key, keeping a reading on the display. The zero set key allows for setting zero measurements on any point along the spindle, which allows for comparative measurements. The digital micrometer is more sophisticated than the conventional micrometer. But keep in mind, one of the most common measurement instruments is still the conventional micrometer. Digital calipers offer quick and easy readings of inside and outside dimensions. Typically, the display reads down to one ten thousandths of an inch, but the accuracy is always plus or minus one thousandth. The reading is easily obtained from the digital readout. You press a button to convert between metric and decimal inch measurement. It is also possible to reset the zero at any point, which is particularly useful for comparative measurements. Some digital calipers can also store peak high and low measurements. And some versions also offer out of limit signals, which indicate automatically when a piece is out of tolerance. Measurement hold is usually another feature. Connections to make printouts of measurement data are also available on digital calipers. When machined pieces are difficult to measure or check because of their size, surface irregularity, or multiple dimensions, more complex electronic and optical instruments must be used. Learning to operate these instruments normally requires special training. Today we'll focus on the parts and functions of four of them. The optical micrometer, the coordinate measuring machine, the optical comparator, and the automatic optical micrometer. Let's begin with the optical micrometer, the most commonly used optical instrument. In some ways it functions like the mechanical and electronic micrometers we've already seen. The features and capabilities of these instruments can vary a great deal we'll be looking at the most basic of them. The optical mic is used mainly during assembly work, for example, to check dimensions after welding or brazing. It is often called a traveling mic because the object to be measured is placed on a movable table slide. The table slide connected to a larger base moves on ball bearings and is spring-loaded to absorb backlash. Two micrometer type heads are used to move the slide and position the object for measuring. These micrometer heads can take readings down to tenths of a thousandth of an inch. One head positions the table along the left-right direction or plane, called the x-axis. The other mic head moves the table along the plane toward and away from the operator, called the y-axis. 
A microscope is used to provide a magnified image of the machined or tooled workpiece being measured. Turning the focus knob on the microscope brings the object into focus and allows the operator to take measurements in the third plane, which is up or down. This plane is called the z-axis. This arrow indicates a dimension to be measured. On which axis will the measurement be taken? The x, the y, or the z-axis? It's the y-axis. Remember, the x-axis is the left-right plane, and the z-axis is the up or down plane. The plane that moves toward and away from you is the y-axis. An object placed on the table for measurement is viewed through the microscope's reference lines or crosshairs. The point at which they intersect provides a zero reference point. That is the point from which the measurement must be taken. In taking a measurement along the y-axis, this crosshair serves as a reference line. When taking a measurement along the x-axis, this crosshair serves as a reference line. Some traveling mics have digital readouts that display measurements taken along the x and y axes. Other traveling mics, like this one, have scales on the micrometer heads. But there are some differences between these scales and the ones we've seen on standard micrometers. Note that each mic head has two scales on the side of the barrel and on the thimble. When the table slide moves towards the operator, or to the right, the barrel scale above the reference line is read, like the scale on an outside mic. The thimble reading is taken from the thimble scale closest to the barrel. When the table moves away from the operator, or to the left, the barrel scale below the reference line is read, like the scale on an inside or depth mic. The thimble reading is taken from the thimble scale farthest from the barrel. On the thimble scales, readings can be made down to individual ten thousandths of an inch. That's because the mic heads are so large that even tenths can be graduated around the thimble. The major divisions indicate thousandths. Between each thousandth, there are markings indicating individual tenths. One tenth, two tenths, three tenths, and so on. When we use the scale above the barrel reference line, we read it the same as we would a standard outside micrometer by noting the uncovered graduations. In the reading indicated here, the uncovered major barrel scale division nearest the edge of the thimble is the 200 thousandths division. We count three 25 thousandths graduations visible between that division and the edge of the thimble. So the total reading is 275 thousandths. Now let's take a measurement that requires using both the barrel scale and the thimble scale. Before taking a measurement, both the barrel and the thimble scales must be zeroed. Since this measurement will be along the y-axis, we'll zero the y-axis micrometer thimble scale. Then, after placing the object on the table slide, the operator looks through the eyepiece of the microscope and adjusts the focus knob. When the object is in focus, the operator slowly turns a knurled knob on the y-axis micrometer head called a positioning knob. With the y-axis mic head scale zeroed, the positioning knob can be used, and the mic head will not move off its zero setting. The knob moves the table and positions the object so that the dimension to be measured aligns with the y-axis reference line. Next, the operator turns the x-axis micrometer positioning knob so that the table slide aligns the object to be measured with the crosshair's zero reference point. This is the beginning point of measurement, from which the dimension on the object will be measured. Now, the thimble on the y-axis micrometer head is rotated on the barrel. This adjustment moves the object on the table slide along the y-axis until the measurement of the dimension 
is completed. The measurement of this length can then be read on the barrel and thimble scales of the Y-axis mic head. The uncovered graduations on the barrel scale indicate 800 thousandths plus 50 thousandths. The thimble scale indicates 15 thousandths plus 5 tenths. For a total measurement, of 865 thousandths and 5 tenths. Taking a measurement on the x-axis involves the same procedures. After the x-axis micrometer head is set at zero, the operator adjusts the positioning knobs on the micrometer heads until the object is correctly positioned at the zero reference point. Remember that the intersection of the crosshairs, the zero reference point, is the beginning point of measurement. The thimble on the x-axis mic head is turned so that the table moves the object along the x-axis until the crosshairs align with the end of the measurement. The measurement of this dimension is read from the x-axis mic head scales as 98 thousandths and 9 tenths. The coordinate measuring machine is an electronic instrument that gives digital readouts of a sequence of measurements, usually on large assembly pieces or castings. As a production tool and inspection instrument, it can be used to locate coordinate points in relation to each other. It can also be used to check X, Y, and Z axis dimensions after machining operations. The coordinate measuring machine is often simply referred to by its manufacturer's name, Cordax. The Cordax consists of a base on which the object is placed. Reels along the bases are true to the X and Y axes. They are used to hold the component accurately in place. These rails play a similar role to the crosshairs in a traveling micrometer. But as you can see, the X and Y axes are visible without the aid of a microscope. A probe is placed on a sliding mount above the base. The digital displays give readouts from dimensions being measured by the probe. Measurements taken can be accurate down to tenths of thousandths of an inch. One display gives a readout from the probe position along the X axis. The other indicates the y-axis probe reading. When a button is pressed, the y-axis readout can also display z-axis readings of depths or heights. In order to measure the distance between holes, the object is positioned on the base so that the distance is along one of the axes. The probe is placed in one hole and the digital display is zeroed. Then the probe is moved to the next hole, and the distance between the two holes is displayed on the digital readout. Here, the distance between two holes along the x-axis is being measured. The digital display gives a readout of exactly 952 thousandths of an inch. This machine is the optical comparator, sometimes referred to as a shadow graph. Optical comparators are usually used to check irregular surfaces. Lighting is adjusted to reflect off the surface finish or the edge of the object. Contours are visually checked for tolerance by comparing the object to an outline called the template, which shows the specified dimension. The optical comparator has a table or base. When the table is fitted with X and Y axis mic heads, the optical comparator can be used to take measurements similar to the traveling mic, but most often it is used as a comparator. On the base is a control for setting the magnification of the object. Various lenses can enlarge the image between 10 and 100 times. A screen displays the object. It has a hood to keep out unwanted light. The template, with lines indicating proper tolerance, is attached to the screen. Checking the contour of an object for tolerance is done by looking through the template. If the contour falls within the template's tolerance lines, the contour is acceptable. As you can see, this crown is within tolerance. Here is a contour of an object as seen through a template. Is this contour within tolerance? 
Look closely. No, the contour does not fall within the tolerance lines. Finally, let's take a look at the automatic optical micrometer. The AOM, as it is called, is one of the most complex electro-optical measuring machines. It uses magnification to obtain highly accurate measurements. The AOM is capable of taking multiple measurements automatically at great speed along the X, Y, and Z axes. This is why it's called the automatic optical micrometer. The AOM consists of a moving table with mounted fixtures for positioning the object to be measured. A video camera is mounted above the table. Next to the table is a computer with keyboard, disk drive, and monitor. The design specification measurements of an object are programmed onto a computer disk by an engineer. Once the object is positioned on the table and the pre-programmed computer disk is placed in the disk drive, the AOM takes over. The table moves step by step, measuring each required dimension in turn. The monitor displays the different dimensions or angles of the object as it is being measured. After measurements are completed, a computer printer provides a printout of the data for evaluation. The AOM, like many of the other instruments we've seen today, is fast and efficient. As we've said, using these machines requires additional training, but it also requires an understanding of the basic measurement systems and procedures presented in this course. If you are unsure of any of the concepts we've covered in these lessons, take the time to go back and review the program materials.